I personally learned about Richard Buckminster Fuller in 1967 as the architect of the geodesic dome at Montreal's Expo 67. But he was already famous then as an architect and a futurist. He coined terms that have entered our vocabulary, synergetic and spaceship earth. Uh, also terms that didn't catch on as well, dimaxion, tensegrity, and ephemeralization. Bucky attended Harvard, but did not complete a degree. He was expelled twice, once for partying himself broke with a vaudeville troupe, once for, quote, irresponsibility and lack of interest, unquote. Now, this was not the happy sort of expulsion you get in some biographies, which lead to instant success. Bucky took a series of blue collar jobs, which at least gave him a good grounding in mechanics and materials. He served in the US Navy and then as commander of a rescue boat. But he lost the life of a young daughter to polio and spinal meningitis and believed it was due to their unhealthy lower class living conditions. In 1927, he and his father-in-law formed a company called Stockade Building Systems, getting a patent to make compressed sawdust building blocks for cheap, healthy housing. The blocks had vertical holes to put steel supports or to pour load-bearing cement. I actually don't know if it was a good idea or not, but the venture failed. Bucky started drinking heavily and he had a George Bailey moment where he considered drowning himself for the insurance money. But he had an epiphany that year, an actual vision like Paul at Damascus, and he turned his life around. He moved his family to Greenwich Village, where he gave informal lectures at a bohemian cafe, Romany Marie's, which he redecorated in exchange for meals. He met a young architect there named Isamu Noguchi and worked with him for the rest of his life. Bucky set up a model at Romany Marie's of his first Dimaxian house. Dimaxian is a portmanteau road from dynamic, maximum, and tension. Ventilation came down from the roof. The design changed over the years, but the goal was always the same as with the stockade building systems. Cheap, clean, mass-produced homes, easy to ship and assemble. A few were built, including by the U.S. Army in World War II in the Persian Gulf. Uh, critics think he missed the mark in a couple of ways. The design uses a lot of energy-intensive aluminum, and unlike a Frank Lloyd Wright house, it does not blend with its surroundings, unless perhaps you live in a circus. This so-called 4D tower was never built, a tall aluminum and plastic building that could be installed by a Zeppelin. The text on the right says, off goes the Zepp to make a few more deliveries. Bucky did not think small. And this design seems outlandish, but part of it is now used everywhere. The central mast that holds the elevator tower and supports the building. Being a grand nephew of Margaret Fuller and related to several wealthy Boston Fullers, Bucky soon received an inheritance that let him start new projects. He designed a Dimaxian car, a concept car that was featured at the Chicago World's Fair. It was a three-wheeler steered by the third wheel at the rear and could spin on a dime. But if you think rear steering is a problem, you're right. The car was unstable at high speeds and could only be driven by trained pilots. A prototype crashed when it was hit by another vehicle and killed the driver. It never saw production. In the late 1940s, Bucky produced an improved geodesic dome. It was picked up by the US military and that secured his future. Bigger and better domes were his road to fame and fortune. This dome is the oldest surviving. It was built as a restaurant. It's falling apart today, but a developer recently announced that he would restore it. Bucky and his wife lived in one of his domes and you can still see a number of them. Here are the ASM International World Headquarters in Ohio. Uh, the Gold Dome Bank in Oklahoma City, and a dome originally used for a car show in Detroit, which is now in Germany, and the Dimaxian map, which assembles into a geodesic globe. 
Lots of people copied the geodesic dome blueprint, including my cousin Gordon. One day 50 years ago, about a dozen of us helped him assemble a dome boathouse at Lac Trombla. Double layer of chicken wire over pre-cut color-coded two by fours strapped at the ends to iron rings. Then hold temporary plywood backing in place while coating the wire with cement. The actual assembly took one day and it's still holding up. Bucky also built three prototype fly's eye domes. This, the largest, was rescued from obscurity and displayed at a festival in Toulouse in 2013. The Buckminster Fuller Institute, which is definitely a thing, built a 24-foot fly's eye in Miami in 2014. Domes did not stop Bucky from exploring other directions. This is the scale model for the Triton floating community, designed but never built. Bucky wanted a floating city of 100,000 people living just offshore, connected with bridges to the mainland. Crazy? I'm not ready to say myself one way or the other. Bucky's most famous dome is the U.S. Pavilion for Expo 67. The building was originally covered in clear plastic and dominated by the open parachutes of Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo space capsules. It was later converted to the Montreal biosphere. After a fire removed the skin, it was left open to the elements. Bucky was an author, futurist, and environmentalist. His best known book is Operation Manual for Spaceship Earth. In addition to that and 30 other books, he wrote one of history's most comprehensive diaries, 270 feet of shelf space, currently kept at Stanford University. He was Humanist of the Year in 1969 and World President of Mensa from 1974 until his death in 1983. His epitaph, call me Trim Dad, Trim Tab, refers to the trim tab on a large ship rudder. The pilot turns the trim tab, the trim tab turns the rudder, and the rudder turns the ship. In the same way, Bucky firmly believed in the ability of one person to change the world.